You're listening to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. When your heart is aching and your world is shaking, don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today we're here with Kim Hope. Kim is a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach. She was diagnosed at 50 with Hashimoto's and osteopenia. Am I saying that right, Kim? Osteopenia. Osteopenia. And had to fight for more testing because she attributed her symptoms to getting to a certain age. Oh my God. I could just go on and on about that. Her doctor instantly started putting her on a bunch of meds when she asked how long her doctor said forever. So this was something she was going to be treated for chronically. Um, That wasn't good enough. And she started reaching out and found a plant-based lifestyle of eating, personal care, and a clean home. Kim was already working out, but almost with almost no changes until she changed her food she ate. Oh my gosh, food is medicine. People learn it. it. Is it not like two of my daughters are doctors of natural medicine. And they're like, God, if everyone just knew the power of what you're putting in your body, just in food. So I'm so glad you're here, Kim. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this. So one of the things we ask all of our guests is to share a story of hope. So I'm going to let you go and share your story of hope. And then we'll get into how that led you to where you're at right now. Well, as uh, Gina explained, I, um, you know, uh, when I got to be, you know, hitting towards that 50-ish age, uh, I was definitely having more symptoms that, you know, I attributed to, okay, I'm just tired today. Um, I was tired all the time, definitely groggy, could sleep in a car in 10 minutes, Um, joint aches, all these different things. And I knew that I had to see a doctor. So as she explained, um, you know, I went to my doctor, he, and she instantly said, you're 50 years old, and this is, you know, where you're at. And um, so again, like she explained, going on medication and asking to be on it for the rest of my life just was not that I just didn't, couldn't see that. Like, I felt like when I turned 50, I had lots of life to live. A lot of women turn 50 and they feel like they're going downhill. And I felt like I was really just getting started. So when I discovered a more plant-based lifestyle and it's not vegan, it's just, I eat more plants and I learned to eat the right kind of meats and um, in right proportions. And I started to not only feel better, um, but I looked better. And more and more people just started asking me, what are you doing? You know, whatever you're doing, I want to do because you look like you're full of life. And, um, you know, the owner at my gym, I just started bringing more and more people with me to work out. And as more people jumped on my bandwagon, I could just see like life coming back into people. Um, I truly believe that it's, you could work out all you want. You could be in here for two hours, but when you go home and you're, you're just going to be eating the same old things every day, you're, nothing's going to change. And that's exactly what had happened to me. So at 50, 51 years old, I changed course direction in my life. And I decided I needed to show other women, you can do this too. You don't have to wait for a health diagnosis like I did to, you know, decide to live your life, you could, we could actually possibly prevent that. You wouldn't have to go down my road. Or if you're at my road, I have a way of life for you that isn't just all put in a pill bottle. And more and more women, mostly women, um, started reaching out to me. And as I helped them, I knew that it wasn't enough. And I literally said, I felt like light bulbs went off in my, in my head that just said, I think I need to do more. And so I did become a certified personal trainer and the nutrition side of things really started to take off for me. And I just felt this passion surrounded by them. And um, when everything shut down last year, the gym shut down, um, I was out of work. I didn't have anything to do. And I decided I need to learn more and do more so that when we come out of this, people are gonna need me. And that's when I, deep dove into learning more about plant-based um, lifestyle, both inside, outside, what you use in your home, what you use on your body, what you're putting in your body, what are the right things to nourish your body. And 
you know, I've started to see women who said, you know, because I watch what you do, like I got out and I walked today or because of going, you know, eating this way, I was able to come off of blood pressure medicine. I was able to come off of anxiety medicine. And I'm not saying that there's, there is definitely a place for medicine, but there's alternatives that we don't even look at. We don't even start with what you're doing on a daily basis in your home. And now I feel like I want, I'm showing people, don't define yourself by a number, don't define yourself by a blood test, by an age, by a number on a scale. You can do anything you wanna do if you just have that belief in yourself. And if you don't have that belief in yourself, then we need to try to find people to surround you so that you can have this hope to have this best life. Like, just like this podcast, have your best life. 50 is not the end of the world. There's 50 more years that I can't wait to live. I love your story. And a couple of things I want to talk about is how food can affect your body. And you're a, a living, breathing example of it. Mm -hmm. And I have love family members. I love, love, love who've gone to the doctors and they're up that certain age and they were given um, statins and they were given um, metformin and they don't have diabetes and they have borderline high cholesterol, borderline diabetes. And their plan was to give them a lifelong drug to yes. keep that from elevating instead of saying, let's talk to a nutritionist. Let's try six months on changing your diet, retesting and seeing how that looks. Because I'm telling you, it can change <laughs> with just food. And to me, statins and metformin are two of the worst drugs that you can take on a, a regular basis to your exactly. body. It, you're, you're basically what drugs do. And when they instantly go right to a pharmaceutical route is we're, we're masking the problem. We're not getting to the root of the problem. What, why, why are you having high blood pressure? Why are you borderline diabetic? And a lot, a lot of it stems from the food that people eat. I mean, over 80% of people in our country are metabolic, metabolically unhealthy. There is something underlying going on with them. And so many people have an underlying health condition that maybe is hereditary. Oh, I come from a family of diabetics, so I'm gonna be a diabetic. Oh, I have you know, Alzheimer's runs in my family, I'm gonna have Alzheimer's. More people are in control. That switch doesn't have to get turned on in your body if you're fueling your body the way it needs to be, if you're putting in all these toxins from stuff that goes on your skin to, you know, not eating organic and eating processed foods, there's a reason why stuff sits on a, you know, a shelf in a um, grocery store and lasts a long time. It's because it's full of chemicals that keeps that shelf life going. You have no idea how long that sit there. We're going to make your own pasta sauce from scratch instead of you know, a bunch of cans or, you know, things from scratch. And, and really, even when you're making the food yourself, you are starting to smell that food. You can, you, the aromas are making your mouth water and the saliva starts to go. And you're already starting that digestive process before you've even put a thing in your mouth where you take something that's ready-made, put it in the microwave, go to eat it. I mean, it, it just, it's an endless cycle. And I know we just live in this really fast world where it's just easier, faster. How can I get it and spend less time? And it's really not that, it's not that much extra time really to make your own food. 100%. We rarely eat out. We make almost everything from scratch. I buy hardly nothing processed, but it was because of a scare that mm -hmm. I had. And because I don't have a stomach, I I don't, I want all the nutrients I can get out of everything I'm able to get into my body. And what I'm going to tell all of you guys might surprise you, but it's not so much even that we're putting good foods in our body. It's how we're preparing those foods that we're putting in our bodies. So we're boiling them to death or zapping them in the microwave. microwave. We're losing so much nutrition. Mm -hmm. I saw a little girl, which is why I don't ever use a microwave now. She did her um, science project and she had two plants and one she watered with, they're set next to each other, same sunlight, everything was the same. She had watered one with tap water and one with microwaved water. 
and every day she'd water the exact same amount. And within a week and a half, one was already dying. Within two and a half weeks, it was dead. And the other one was thriving because she had zapped every nutrient out of that water that that plant needed to grow. I, I 100% believe it. I mean, the things that we're exposed to, you know, on the daily basis, our cell phones, technology, I mean, it, everything just emits all of these things that we're just surrounded by all day long. And we just have to find the ways that we can control and minimize all that in our life. And, you know, reheating something in the oven, toaster ovens are great. I mean, so many people have air fryers now, you're not even using oil. Um, there's so many safer and easier ways for people to eat food and have it without cooking out all the nutrients. Even like something I learned much later in life, when I would cook vegetables, what do you do? You pill them to death, right? Oh, but all the nutrients were in the pills. They're in, right. It's, yeah, it's and they pain. taste delicious. Yeah, I mean, that people like, you know, I used to peel an apple and take the skin off the apple. You would peel the carrots and even a lemon. There is so much nutrients in the rinds of the citrus foods. And, you know, when I'll make a smoothie, I'll even take a half a, lo half a lemon, cut it in half, rinds and all go right in my mixer. There is so much nutrient value. We don't have to take the skins off of so many things. I can remember taking the skins off of cucumbers and zucchini and there's so you're, we're, we're destroying food because it just, we didn't know any better. And now we do know better and we just need to get that word out to more people. So tell us some of the things that you work with, because when you say of a certain age, I've yeah. heard that many times, welcome to your fifties. Now I'm hearing welcome to your sixties. And I will not accept that as an answer. That no. doesn't mean that your body does change, right? It does it's slow definitely. down. It processes yeah. slower, but that just means that I have to adjust as my body's adjusting and understand that. Like I, now I, you know, how I used to laugh at people who ate dinner at five o'clock because we ate at eight, nine, whatever, because right. our bodies could do that. Like it could take care of that food. Now I try to eat before nothing after six if possible. Cause my body just doesn't process that anymore after a certain hour. Right. Well, everybody really needs, you need time for your body to digest. And, you know, that's why intermittent fasting is so big for people now is because they're using this fast and digest, fast and digest, and then break the fast, which really break the fast that's breakfast. So if you, so what we try to do like a 12 hour fast where like you, we stop eating six, seven o'clock is my definite cutoff. And we don't, and all night long we're digesting, we're letting our liver and everything function the way it should be, let all the nutrients come out when we go to the bathroom in the morning. And then I, you know, chase it down when I get up in the morning with, you know, some lemon water and I've got a little green drink that I drink. Um, and I start feeling my body again um, and hydrate it because, you know, you're not getting hydrated during the night, but everybody needs to do that. And so many people go to bed after eating at 11, 12 o'clock at night. And then, you know, they they're up five, six hours late. And the first thing they grab is the cold pizza from, you know, the night before it's like, you didn't even let your body digest what you ate yesterday, much less you're already putting in something that not fully, you know, nutrients to start your day off. It's going to fuel you. 100% true. And here's the thing though, that I, and I don't know what you know about this or like, mm -hmm. I know very little, but I was told that you have to have something in your system when you go to bed at night. Here's why our bodies are doing all of its healing, growing, repairing in our sleep. That's why it's so important that we're getting proper sleep. And right. so what I found worked for me is taking my supplements at night. So sometimes if you get that bloaty feeling from supplements or whatever, so after dinner, I take my supplements and those supplements are helping support my body during my resting time where it's recuperating yeah. and recovering and doing what it needs to do. And it, I wake up in the morning, literally full of energy. Like I don't drag out of bed anymore, right. but it was cause I gave my body something to use and burn and like make effective while I'm sleeping. Yeah. There's definitely people, it, it kind of, some people, it just depends on the body because some people don't they do wake up a little more nauseous. Um, it really depends on the person. My, I know my husband takes the supplements with dinner, like on a full stomach. And that's, um, you know, when he takes his, I'll use mine throughout the day. Um, I, I will do um, like a detox tea at night. You know, it's got ginger and chamomile and different things that kind of help soothe 
um, my liver to help it, you know, do what it needs to do. Um, but I used to be, I used to wake up nauseous. Um, and I don't anymore. I used to have that nauseous feeling like all the time. And I just, I can't believe that, you know, you, you know, we always attributed it to an inner ear problem. And I think to some degree it's there, but I, I can't believe how well I feel all the time. And I, like, I feel like I just aged backwards, you know, 10 years by just watching what I put, you know, in my body at all times and treating it with rest. And you, that's the biggest thing is people go, 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 go. And, you know, are you resting? Are you getting a good quality sleep? And especially women with your hormones, you need that resting time, you know, for your hormones to adjust. And we just we run like rat <laughs> this little rat race and we're like on a little hamster wheel and you know all of a sudden you come off and you're like why do I feel like that because the wheel is going and you never take time to get off I love that one of the other things about us getting to a certain age what are some of the um maybe tips you can give us to, for our changing bodies and I know everyone's unique and they're different and mm -hmm. but there are some changes that are not so unique. <laughs> They're the, like, we, we do yeah. get to, for, especially for women, our hormones definitely are saying goodbye to us and, yeah. and they're just, you know, they're depleting and changing. And I am a totally, I don't take any kind of supplements for those because mm -hmm. I have a blood clotting disorder and I wasn't able to, but I never had one symptom because of my diet. Not, I never had sweats. I never, I not I one symptom. I know. And that, and I think that's like, the biggest thing is that women really think that, you know, you're during your cycle, even now that you're supposed to, it's supposed to be a painful cycle. And then when you um, get to the menopause time, you're supposed to have all those menopause symptoms. And that's really a sign that you have a hormone imbalance and really women should seek out a natural path, get their hormones tested. Um, look to see which hormones are working and not, you know, are you estrogen dominant? Are you progesterone? You know, where are all your um, hormones? And I know for me personally, I had to be tested when I got tested. I said, can you, can you kind of find out like if I'm, you know, at that age or not? And she says, oh, you're already, you know, partway through to, to being done. And I, I would just get this very little rush and it would go away. So uh, and I do know that going on a low to no sugar diet, um, and when I say diet, I don't want people on a diet. I don't believe in diets per mm -hmm. se. I believe the foods that you're putting in your body is your diet. Um, gluten, dairy, and soy are the worst things for women's hormones. Um, they mimic the hormone. They will actually exasperate um, your um, your cycles and definitely menopause, um, for a lot of women. And if, and that's why I really teach people to be more plant-based and add more plants as opposed to filling it with, you know, oh, I can't give up my bread. So I can't give up my pastas and, you know, different things. And it's like, that's really adding to the problem of what you're having. And there are so many different gluten-free versions that are out there if you need to have your pastas, but women definitely, soy is one of the biggest ones um, and sugar and dairy are super inflammatory. Everybody should really be watching those, but as women, especially for your hormones, but you need to get tested. You need to find out, it's just like going on those statin drugs. Like you just can't say, oh, I'm gonna take this for my men for menopause, but we don't really know every single woman is different. So, and then the other thing that I always recommend to women is if you're not going to join a gym, you need to get somewhere and you need to be, you need to be lifting weights because small weights, hand weights, something go walking with your weights, get wrist weights, because once we, our hormones do start depleting, that's when things start elevating in our body where, okay, maybe you're not making so much bone mass anymore, which is what happened to me, which um, is a combination of potentially what, what is going on in my thyroid. Um, but we need to be lifting weights. We need to be strong. We don't need to be, go into bodybuilding competitions, but we do need to keep up with, we, every year you lose more and more bone mass. And if we're not lifting weights and doing something to keep our bones strong, we are headed right down the road for osteoporosis. 
You know what? I, I'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of people who know my story know that I had to have my, my stomach completely removed. So it's very hard for me to absorb nutrients, yet I'm thriving. Having said that, what they didn't tell me was that not only am I, in, I I'm in menopause because I had to have a hysterectomy, but now I can't absorb nutrients properly. And mm. so one day I fell and broke my arm. I went in for a bone scan and I like, well, I don't even know why I need this. I fell pretty hard. I'm not surprised I broke it. And it wasn't even that bad of a break, but right. I found out that I had the worst osteoporosis. They said I had the bones of like a 90 year old. Oh. And I was like, what? So I had to take a, uh, something called reclass, which is kind of like chemo removes the, the, the calcium from the blood cell and into the bone. And it makes you very sick, but I had no idea. And I use weights, re weight resistant stuff for everything because mm -hmm. I did not understand the importance and how your aging body. Yes. It affects everything, correct? Yeah, definitely. And we can, I'm not saying that, you know, I can't reverse the fact that I have um, osteopenia at the beginning of osteoporosis, but I certainly can stop the progression of it. You know, I can be a lot more diligent about incorporating it into my life. And every single day, there is some form of resistance or weightlifting. You know, I'd say every day, there's probably, you know, six out of seven days potentially, but I'm doing something because let's face it. I mean, we're, we are living longer and I don't have grandchildren yet. And when I do, I want to be here and be able to do things with them. I don't want to be the grandparent that just sits on a chair and says, Oh, I can see you from over there. Like I want to be able to do things and keep doing things and not be worried about if I step off this thing, just right. I'm going to break my ankle and be worried about every little thing that I do. I want to live life to the fullest and not be thinking about what could potentially coming down the road that could be in a negative for my health. So Kim, one of the most favorite things, and one of the reasons I was attracted to what you're doing on, you guys have to follow her on Instagram. She's phenomenal. But, and that's where I found her because I was searching for people like her that were very authentic in their zone of genius and really showing up, sharing, you know, and changing. One of the things that you just said that I absolutely love is you don't believe in diets. I don't either. And I want people to understand, and you just said it really well, that Diet is simply what we put in our mouths and what we're eating, but it became a marketing ploy to get you to buy whatever fad that they were making billions of dollars off. So exactly. if you can just get that diet out of your mind and you talk about hormones and you talked about too, but every, there's so many hormones that I can't even, I could even name whole body runs on hormones. Right. And like when one starts to falter, the others try to pick up. So they start to falter and yes. everything that's going on in your body is connected to a hormone. Everything, mm -hmm. just like everything we do is connected to mindset, right? What we think yes. we can accomplish it's from the gut to the brain. And when your gut is inflamed, that goes back to the whole inflammation thing that I talked about with gluten and dairy and soy, they're huge disruptors to the body and they affect gut health. And your gut health is everything. Everything starts in your gut, your happy pill, your emotions, um, how you're, again, inflammation that doesn't, that affects your hormones, that goes right to the brain. I mean, it, the, the inflammation I was just having, even just in my shoulders and the different things, like it was gone in like just two weeks from getting off of that stuff. And it, it, it's huge that people are tied, like you said, to a marketing ploy that if you just give up this food group, and that food group and you'll have and then, when, and then people right exactly and people will say to me well you're saying to go up gluten and dairy that's not a food group it's an ingredient there, there's a difference G you know giving up a carb that your body needs to your body needs carbs we're fueled by carbs and there are healthy carbs you just you know somebody will say oh like you know that I'm like they had carrots i'm like you know you just had a carb you know they just they don't they associate carbs with bread and it's just, it's, it is, it's a huge marketing game that's out there. And they just, I believe in, you know, supplementing because everything that's necessarily on whatever you get, the ingredients aren't a hundred percent. You can't, you know, if you do buy something from a box or you buy, you know, something labeling is off. So we definitely need to take matters into our own hands and make sure that we're getting, you know, the food we need, but it's about diet is food. It's what how you eat on a daily basis. And it's a lifestyle. You know, when people say, oh, well, you're doing this, you know, it's your diet. I'm like, this isn't my diet. This is how I live in my life. And it's how I'm living. It's how I'm thriving now. And 
I, I, I'm never going back to that life. I, you know, I didn't know better then I know better now. And I want other people to know that they can feel and look and just live their life to the fullest without until they get a health diagnosis. And that's, I know two different women who recently I've had conversations with that basically waited for a health diagnosis to wait. It's a wake up call. And it's scary. And both situations were, you know, a high end situation. You know, one ended up being in a hospital and it's, we tend to take care of everybody else but ourselves, you know, especially as women. And there's a lot of men out there that take over that women's role, but as women, we tend to do it all. And we're taking care of the kids. We're taking the doctors. You know, for me, I was, I say soccer mom. I was that softball mom. I was catching, you know, for my daughter, you know, she was a pitcher. I was catching, we were driving across the country for softball. We were constantly going, 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 and, you know, go off to college and they're doing college stuff. And, you know, my kids went away to college. It's like, whew, where did I go? Now what do I do? And it, you know, it was a year or so later after that, when I started to really not feel the best that then it was like, I felt it was this God wink. Hello, I'm knocking on you. I've got that next thing that you should be doing. And, you know, here it is, take it and run with it. So I think when you see your doctor for yearly checkups or when you get knocked down and you have no choice and you get some sort of diagnosis, that's a great time for you to ask your doctor, is there something holistic I can be doing before I try the medications. And if they say, no, it's critical, you need to be on this and we can implement that and see if we can get you off. But most times they're happy to say, yeah, right. let's retest you in six months. Let me hook you up with a nutritionist or someone like Kim and mm -hmm. let's get you started and let's see if you can maintain that six months and let's retest. Yeah, that is exactly. totally okay. And that's the time to have that discussion. Yeah. And I ended up having to leave the doctor because she, you know, I, def I basically, like you said in the beginning, I had to say, are you sure we can't test for anything? And she said, you know, women, as we get older, we're, you know, we can have that pouch and we can have this. And I said, but I'm not feeling good. And, you know, when I switched doctors and I have a different general practitioner now, he looked at my blood work and compared it from where it was. And he said, I don't know what you're doing here, but these numbers don't add up. And I, I explained, I said, I try to not use the medication. I felt like I don't want to be on all this different stuff. And it was like, here's a pill, here's a pill. It's, you know, up the doses. And, and I said, I really started incorporating more plants. And I explained to him the program that I was doing and how it even changed how I was, what results I was getting. You know, I've been working out pretty steadily um, for a good year, year and a half before I saw my doctor and the three months prior to seeing her, I was in working out every single day for three months solid. And I said, there should be results. There should be something. And once I went back to see this new doctor, he said, I don't know what you're doing, but don't stop. And I said, well, I'm starting to show people how to do this. And he says, whatever it is, don't stop. And he was all for holistic and not every doctor is. It's easy to Here's a script. Here's a script. Here's a script. And there are, that's, it's chemicals. We got to get back to, um, and I just, you know, shared the story on what, on one of my stories last week that, you know, we used to make fun of, uh, you know, you look at Indians and you watch, you know, these movies or, you know, things that depict them. And you always have this medicine man that was, you know, everybody would go to, and it was this you know, major healer and everybody went to them and they, you know, perform miracles. They were using plants. They were using things from the earth, berries and herbs and all these different things. That's where the, the basis of almost all of medicine that is out there started with plants. It's just that now they've come up with chemical versions of those plants instead of just sticking with the plants. And so we, that's why I feel it's so important to get the right nutrients in our body. And I'm not saying you can't go have a piece of cake. Like people, you know, oh, you can't, oh, you're never going to have cake. You're never going to have alcohol. No, but if I don't have a drink the rest of my life, I, I'm not going to miss it. There's going to be occasions where we're going to celebrate. There's going to be occasions where we might have a bite of cake. We won't eat the whole cake, but there's also different versions of it that are better for me that actually taste really good. So I just, it's a hard thing for people 
to get out of their own way of something that it's been their whole life. And people don't, change is hard. It's very hard for people to change. And I'll, I'll have a lot of people to say, it works really good for you, but I couldn't do that until they get a health diagnosis. And that's the scary part. I will tell you one quick trick. Like, yeah. have you ever been told no? And you're like, hell, I'm doing that. You're not telling me no, right? Yes, Our exactly. brain is the same way. So mm -hmm. when you say, I can't eat carbs, I can't eat sugar, I can't eat dairy, your brain's like, oh, hell, you can't. But if right. you just change that verbiage to, I don't eat, you yes. are making that choice. You are taking exactly. control and it's not being restricted from you. And if you keep changing the word, I can't to, I don't, yes. your brain exactly. gets in line with that. So that's a super easy trick, right? Yes. I'm so into the mind. Um, you know, I really try to come across on my page as much as possible and to clients and people that I meet about your mindset is everything. And I know you had a post recently about your mindset, what we put in our mind and the words that we, that we use totally changes everything. You know, I try to live by, I am statements. I am this, I am that, and be positive instead of, you know, woe is me and try to, what you say about, say in here is what you bring about. If you're going to yep. be negative, yep, you're going to have a negative day. If you're going to say this is hard, it will be hard because you're not choosing the words that say, I can do this. I can do it. And sure, it might not have happened that day, but the next day you look back and say, hey, I did that yesterday. I can't believe I did that. That's a win. If you don't have, I think the people look at the mountain. You don't need the mountain. You just need the steps. It's the journey to get up to the top of that mountain, which was really kind of my aha moment for me was that I had gone hiking with my daughter and I was, she wanted to take me on a hike. I was visiting her while she was away at grad school and I had been in the gym a lot and I thought, oh, I'm healthy. And I thought I was eating healthy, you know, Hey, I'm eating salad. You know, I'm, I'm a healthy person. People equate that as healthy and, you know, wasn't looking at the portions and the ingredients and the salad dressings and, you know, all the different stuff and all the extras that comes along with it. But we decided to hike up this mountain and not even partway through, I, I couldn't, I'm like, how much longer is this going to be? I thought you said we were doing a hike and I didn't, we only got about halfway up this thing. And um, I said, is that it? She goes, no, that's the little mountain. This is the rest of it that we have to climb. And I could see what's part of it. And I said, I don't even want to keep going. And I was so mad at myself. I was so angry that I had let myself, let myself go, I guess. And she said, you'll just feel better when you, when you do this. So she says, not too much longer. So we did that second part of the, the mountain. And when we get up to the top, you can overlook and see all of Atlanta. It's just gorgeous up there. But instead of being at the top and being happy with myself, I was mad. And that, and I said, I don't care what it takes. When I come back off this mountain, something's got to give, something's wrong. It's got to be fixed and it starts now. And I went back a year later after I had completely changed everything that I was doing. And I brought my husband with me. I said, we're climbing this mountain again. And yeah, it's going to be hard. But when I get to that top of that mountain, I am going to be I know I'm going to, and I did, we got to the top of that mountain and I said, I conquered this and I feel amazing. And this view is prettier than it was a year ago. And I, and that's what I want people to do. I want them to enjoy their journey. It, it's, it's not a destination. It's the journey that you have to get there. There's no quick fixes. There's no magic pills. There's no magic wraps. There's no fat burners, no anything that will get you there. You didn't gain it all in one time. You didn't, your health didn't decline overnight. It's, it's a bunch of series of events that led, yet led you to where you are now. You can, we can get you to change that. And it's just little baby steps. That's all it's going to take. And we will get you to the top of your mountain. Well, Kim, you, mm. I love your energy. I love everything about you. Um, you guys, Thanks. I'm going to put all of her links and everything, her free offer, everything in the, in the um, show notes. So just go grab it, connect with her. She's pretty amazing. And I was really thank honored you. to have you on the show today. So oh my thank gosh, you. the honor is mine. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Oh My Health There Is Hope podcast. Make sure to visit Jana's website, bestholisticlife.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, or listen there so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, 
That'll help too. Let's change the world together, one health expert at a time. Looking forward to seeing you next time.